So we're going to look at a number of topics uh, all the way from K to grade eight to see what it sounds like to focus on understanding as opposed to just focusing on do they did they learn the procedures that I wanted them to learn. And we're going to think about both assessment and instruction when we do that. Now, the reason I think understanding is important is partly pragmatic and practical. Kids remember things that they understand better than they remember things that they don't understand. So if we can build understanding, we don't have to keep reteaching things. And that's a pretty valuable thing for us as teachers. But it's also about what learning really is. I think learning isn't that you just can repeat what I told you. I think learning is that you can use the ideas that I've taught you in new situations. And I think that's hard to do unless you do have understanding. Um, when I ask a kid, you know, do you understand or can you explain something? I don't want them to just rehash the things that I said to them. I want them to kind of figure out why is this happening and when is this happening? And that's an important part of mathematics. Um, I have to, as a teacher, think about what is it that I really care about that I do want students to understand because we teach a lot of stuff and some things we're going to care about more than other things. So I'm going to spend time with you today looking at various topics and talking about what do I care about and what kind of question would I ask to see if kids really understand. So we're going to start with young kids, whether they're kindergarten or grade one. We certainly want them to be able to count. We certainly want them to be able to show me a number. Like if I say show me six, we want that. We certainly want them to tell me which of two numbers is greater. But I want them to understand some things, not just be able to do those things. And what do I do to find out if they really understand? So here's an example of what I'm going to call a do it question. Now, I want to clarify, do it doesn't mean it's bad. It's a good question, but it's can you do what I already showed you? Like, did you hear me and can you repeat it? So if I showed these stars to kids and asked them how many are there, I think that's a great question for a kindergarten teacher to ask, but it's do you remember what I showed you to do? I want to contrast that with what I'm going to call an understand it question. Do you think there's more blue or do you think there's more yellow? And why do you think that? Now, my intention in asking this question is to very explicitly, very directly help kids understand that the yellow is more in a certain way. It has more area. But the blue is more in a different way. There are more individual pieces. And I want to ask that question to ensure the kids understand the difference between those two things. So if we hear a kid say there's more yellow, we don't just say that's wrong. We want to say what made you think it was more yellow. They're going to say that the, there's they're bigger. And I want us not to say you're wrong. I want us to say you're right. They do take up more space. Is there anything more about the blue? So that's what I mean by an understand it question. Um, notice that this allows um, more inclusion because a kid who is thinking yellow isn't dismissed. There's an opportunity to see why that student is right as well. Here's another example for little kids. I could give them some counters and say, please show me six. And that would be, again, a very good thing for little kids to be able to do. And they might just be copying what I already showed them how to do. In contrast, I could ask them this question. This shows six. I am telling you that is six stars. How would that help you show five? Or how would that help you show seven? What I want to see is if a kid starts all over again to count five or all over again to count seven, or does a kid realize, oh, all I have to do is take one away if I want five, or all I have to do is put one more on if I want to show seven. So that's a deeper understanding. They're showing that they see relationships between numbers. Um, 
And I also think that what you see is an opportunity for conversation. So one of the things we've been trying to do in mathematics for the last bunch of years now is to make it less silent and more conversation because kids learn by talking and by hearing from their peers. So this is an opportunity for conversation, whereas if I just said, show me six, there's not going to be much conversation happening.